Amen. Amen. And let's remain standing as we go before our God in prayer. Father in heaven, we come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you yet again, thanking you for another day that we get to preach your word, and hopefully some will accept it. But we thank you, O oh God. Some did not arise this morning, and they have gone on to their eternal destination. Some have gone to the pit of hell. and Some have gone to be with you, O oh God. And that is where I want to be, in your arms, O oh God. When my mission is done here on earth, I want to be with you. So I ask you, Father, to open up spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, spiritual hearts to understand that the hearer today, after hearing your word, will ask the question, what must I do to be saved? These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let every heart say, thank God, thank God. and amen. amen. And you may have your seat. Yes. Amen. Brother Harmon got my little song up a little too late. Amen. So by the time uh, we go live at 1110, you won't hear no music. You won't hear no drums beating. You won't hear no guitar playing and all that stuff. It's, re it's time to share with you the word of God. Amen. Let me thank our friends on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Rumble. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us here at Way of Life Ministries. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much for allowing Pastor Harmon to be a part of your day. And Dante, if on this camera you can go in and correct that contrast, I didn't get a chance to do it. So uh, go ahead and correct the content. You can leave it, you can leave it in, while you're doing it, that's fine. But go ahead and brighten it up. I don't want it to look too dark to those who are viewing us on today. But thank you so much for tuning in. Friend, if not all the time that I'm up here preaching, I am always warning about this place. This uh, on my left side, uh, it is the, the pit of hell. Uh, thank you so much, Dante, for uh, fixing that. This is the pit of hell. And we here at Way of Life Ministries and other ministries uh, are trying to get people not to go to that place, but they're just running there. We are not the only ones that preach this message, Rochelle. But us that preach this message, don't too many people view us. Don't too many people like to hear us. They think we're born and we don't got nothing to say and that where they're going is going to lead to happiness and promise and all that stuff. No, friend. It's going to lead right here to this pit. This is where it's going to lead you to. Right here. There's no uh, happiness. There's no peace there, friend. It's going to lead you right to that pit. And that's where we don't want you to, to go to. Hallelujah to his name. Let me give you the death clock. And we're going to get into our message. And while I'm trying to pull up this old death clock, let me ask you all to do Pastor Harmon a favor. And that is to get out your Bible. Get out your Bible right now so that you can follow us along. Amen. Those of you that are on Facebook, get out your Bible. Those of you that are on YouTube, get out your Bible. Those of you that are sitting at home in your car, however you're watching us, please, if you can and will, get out your Bible. Get out something to write with and something to write on. And as we are expounding these scriptures, please don't uh, debate with yourself or anyone else. Write them down. And then you can go back later to, and debate. You can go back later and take your time and dissect everything that Pastor Harmon has said. Take it apart as much as you can. Compare it against the word of God because that's where I'm bringing it from. If I've changed it one iota, if I have diminished the meaning of it, stop listening to me. Find somebody else that will tell you the truth. But friend, I am not going to take from God's word. I am not going to diminish it. I stand here. As a soldier of the king, friend, and I'm ready to battle. Let me give you the death clock. These are people, Rochelle, who are either no longer qualified to join the battle. Uh huh. Or those who were in the battle have gone on. And their works do follow them. Hallelujah to his name. The death clock. 
Again, reported numbers as of midnight to those who have left this life. The death clock reports that 3,638 souls have gone. I would love to report to you that this morning that all of those folks uh -huh, have avoided this place, but I would be lying to you. Friend, most, if not all, are right there right now, wishing that they could hear a message like this again, wishing that they had another opportunity to accept the king, and his name is Jesus, and he is the savior of the whole world. Hallelujah to his name. Friend, I never would have thought, Rochelle, that I would be one uh, preaching God's word. Never had a desire to be a pastor. But friend, when God called, I answered. Hallelujah to his name. Who's reading for me today? I am. All right, I want you to read nice and loud. We're going to continue our message. Learning to plant seed. And if I am not mistaken, I think we is part number 16. 15 was last week, so it's 16 this week. And we are going to continue on. I have been expounding this chapter 13 of the book of Matthew. This is the 16th week. Hallelujah to his name. On last week, one of these no good bishops, so-called bishops, took what I had been expounding on of what Jesus had said. He took it and gave it another meaning, talking about your timing and all this stuff. Friend, if you take the word of God and you twist it and contort it and try to get it to what you wanted to say, you're going to be in trouble with the king. Hallelujah to his name. And Mr. Jakes, you are in severe trouble. I'm here hoping that you will hear my warning or some other preacher's warning to you and that you would change your way. I hope that we could all preach the same thing like the scripture says. Hallelujah to his name. Rochelle, get me over back over to... Matthew chapter 13, <coughs> excuse me, I think we stopped off at about verse 42, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me just pay through and get there with you. All right. Read me verse 42. And shall cast them into. I don't want to start there. Hold on. Uh, go up to 41 so that the people understand fully where we're coming from. I don't want to leave no part out. Go ahead, girl. The son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things. That all offend. things that offend. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we've been preaching on this very uh, portion of scripture for about four weeks here. I have not been able to get off of that. Go ahead, Rochelle. And them which do iniquity. Mm -hmm. 42 and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There should be welling and gnashing of teeth. Now, friend, when God separate the wheat from the tear, mm -hmm, the tear is going to this place, the place that I'm trying to get you not to go to. But the wheat, Rochelle, he's going to gather and they're going to be in his arms. They're going to be with the king. Mm -hmm. Do you really want to be with the king, friend? Do you really want to make it in? Or do you just want to feel good for the time? Do you just want to feel good? And this is where you're going to wind up right here and spend eternity. Read on, Rochelle. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom. You see, of we the may Father. not shine in this day and time. Uh huh. We are going to experience a lot. But our king is going to come and rescue us. Then shall we shine. Hallelujah. Keep going. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Uh huh. Who hath ears to hear let him hear who that has ear to hear let him hear some of y'all are not going to hear some of you are going to understand what pastor Harmon is saying but you're not ready to accept it but friend if you die and you have not accepted this word this is where you're going to wind up right here in this pit i don't want you to go there and neither do i want to go uh-huh you're going to have to give all you got to fight for this kingdom Fight to get there. Read on, Rochelle. Give me a little more. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Uh-huh. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath. All right, back up. Read me that again, Rochelle. I'm trying to fix this old heat here. Go ahead. Read me that again. Back up. Give me that scripture again. Again, 
the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field. It's like unto a treasure that's hidden in the field. Do you really want this word of God? Do you really want to live uh -huh, like one of us saved and sanctified folk? One of us who have been set apart. Do you really want that life? Well, friend, you got to uh, see the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden out there in the field. Go search for it. And when you find it, do everything you can to get it and keep a hold of it. Read it, girl. Again, the <coughs> kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field. Uh -huh. The which when a man have found, he had it. And for joy thereof do, goeth and sell all that he have. Mm -hmm. and have you ever been out shopping? Just so that they can understand this. Have you ever been out shopping? And you there going through the aisles and you found something. Uh, maybe you found a dress or something that you really like. Man, maybe you found a suit that you really like and it had a good price on it. Maybe it was on clearance. And that was the only one they had left. Maybe you left your wallet at home. Hallelujah. Lady, maybe you left your purse with all your credit cards at home. So you take that old dress there and you try to hide it among some other things. Sometimes, Rochelle, you may take it off the hook, lay it down there and cover it up with some other stuff and hope nobody else finds it. Hallelujah to his name. Then you get in your vehicle and you go as fast as you can, as safely as you can down the road, trying to get home so you can get your pocketbook or your wallet because you got to get back to that treasure. Hallelujah. You got to get back to that dress. You got to get back to that old suit before somebody come there and dig it up and they find it. But you found the thing. Hallelujah. And once you make it home and you grab your wallet, uh -huh. You ain't got time to speak to nobody. I'll talk to you when I get back. Put your wallet in your pocket or you grab your pocketbook and there you go, heading off back to that store. Hallelujah. Once you get there, Rochelle, the clerk try to greet you and you ain't got time to speak. You got to go back for that treasure that you buried. Hallelujah. This is the word of God, friend. So you go there and you start digging through and when you... You don't quite see it, you get nervous and you think somebody don't found the treasure. But you continue to dig, Rochelle. When I get God's word, Rochelle, and I ain't got quite got it all, I continue to dig because there's more. Hallelujah. And once you start to dig, there's that suit, there's that dress that you buried there. Friend, you did all you could do to get back to that treasure. Hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure, Rochelle, that's out there buried. And when a man finds it, he does all he can to secure it. That man went out and bought the field. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Read it again, Rochelle. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Uh-huh. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth. Instead of all that he had. All that he got, Rochelle, I got to get rid of this. I got to get enough money to purchase this field because in this field is life. In this field, my friend, it's the word of God. I'm giving it to you without charge. And you ought to do all you can to grab a hold of it and understand it. Hallelujah. Anything that offends, sometimes you out there digging, you find a little treasure and you find some, some rocks there. You, that thing, you don't want that. So you get that and you throw that away because you got to keep digging because you can see the treasure chest right there. The things that offend, the things that you don't want, toss it away. Hallelujah. Jesus said, cut it off. Hallelujah. God tell you, give me Mark chapter 9. Start me around verse 43. Uh-huh. Rochelle, keep your finger there. I'm coming right back. Hallelujah. I want Mark chapter 9. Mm -hmm. Start me around 43. I think that's what I want. Because listen, if I got a treasure right there, anything that offend, anything that will stand in my room, Rochelle, I'm going to cut it off. Hallelujah. That may be a treasure that down there in the ground somebody done buried. And years don't went by and roots don't grew over the treasure chest. Friend, I can't get to it unless I cut them roots off. Uh-huh. Read it, Rochelle. And if thy hand offend thee. Now listen, folks. Uh -huh. What's going to keep you from getting a hold of this word of God? Are you going to let your love for these crooked pastors keep you away from getting a hold of the word of God? You love T.D. Jakes that much that you will not go and open your own Bible and look in there and read it for yourself to see if he's changing. Do you love him that much? 
Well, if you do, friend, you do not love this God that I'm preaching about. You do not love the God of heaven. I done told them, Rochelle, don't take it from me. Don't trust me with your soul. Hallelujah. Open up the book and ask God to open up his word to you. Don't trust Donnie. Trust the word of God, friend. Hallelujah. This man is taking God's word and changing, talking about, oh, the wheat and tares. That ain't talking about souls and all that. That's talking about timing. Hallelujah. If his message don't offend you, let me show you where him, you, and all the whole gang that follow him are going to wind up right here in this pit. Friend, Jesus came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And he sent this little old preacher to talk to you. What did he say, Rochelle? And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Leave it alone. Cut it Leave off. it alone. Cut it off. If your right hand offends you, cut the thing off. Hallelujah. Now he's not talking literally to the going there and cut this off. He's trying to show you how important this treasure is, how important the kingdom of heaven is. If your right hand offends you, cut it off. Read on. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands it's better to, to hell. Rochelle, it's better to go into heaven with one arm. Hallelujah. It's better to go in there with no arms than to go in there with two uh, and wind up in hell. Mm -hmm. He's trying to show you the importance. Friend, if the word that I preach to you comes right out of this book, unchanged, if it offends you, something's wrong with you. Hallelujah. But if I get in this Bible and I start to preach and change things in this Bible, cut me off. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you that all these preachers that are preaching, that are not preaching this word, that I take it from it, cut them off. Hallelujah. You can't take the word of God and make it mean something that fits you, that what you want to say. You can't do that. Cut you off. Hallelujah. That little old fella down the street here, uh, Evolve Church, a new church down on 76th Street. Evolve Church. Uh -huh. Now I think the man got a good heart, but God ain't called him to preach. He don't know near about what he's talking about. Uh -huh. Last week, uh, sometimes I flip through a little uh -huh, YouTube thing and see what's happening and I come across this fella and he talking about God done impregnated you with a gift or with something or all this stuff. God ain't impregnating nobody. Uh-huh. Talking about, oh, Isaiah 60. He took Isaiah 66 in verse 8 where he's talking about a nation shall be born in a day and talking about you are pregnant and you in your first trimester. No, you crazy as a roll lizard. Why don't you find out what these scriptures mean, young man, before you go out there trying to expound them? I and you don't know what you're talking about. Rochelle, a nation shall be born in a day refers to Israel. Uh -huh. 1948 being recognized as their own state, as their own union. Uh -huh. A nation shall be born in a day. Ain't got nothing to do about somebody being impregnated. God ain't put nothing in you. God going to birth this out of you. Shut up and sit down and learn something. Hallelujah. Let me finish running up, up, up and down T.D. Jakes because uh -huh. he can lead far more people away. Hallelujah. Read it, Rochelle. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. Cut it off, uh-huh. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into uh, hell. It's better when they say enter into life. That's talking about uh -huh, into the kingdom. It's better to enter in the, in the kingdom if you only got one hand, Rochelle, as opposed to going to hell and you got both of them. This is death right here, friend. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. uh, you got all your faculties when you in hell. They ain't going to believe me. I'm going to let the scripture tell them. Read on, girl. Into the fire <laughs> that never shall be quenched. That will be quenched sometimes. Never shall See, be See, they teach these folks that, uh, you know, you're going to go to hell because you've been bad. And if you're good, I'll wait. Uh -huh, you're bad. Then you go to heaven. But if you're bad, you're going to go to hell. But you all you're going to burn all up, and then poof, that's the end of you. Then the suffering is over. That's what they teach, Rochelle. That's not what the Bible teach, but that's what these folks teach. You ever seen 
You ever lit a piece of paper? Uh huh. It could be a whole eight by ten sheet. And you light the thing up, and then as you watch the thing burn, you see it starts to get smaller and smaller. And before you know it, you ain't got nothing but some ashes. Hallelujah! Then the wind come and blow them things away. That's the end of that piece of paper. That's how it not it's not going to be that way when you go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's why this little chubby preacher is here trying to warn you. Stop! You got the wrong information. I don't want you to go this way. Listen up. But you won't hear me. You keep pushing me out of the way, friend. And I'm going to tell you, one of these old days, Rochelle, God don't move me. Hallelujah. Well, you still preaching there because God ain't moved me yet. And you better thank God he hasn't. Uh -huh. Read the scripture. Say what the scripture says, girl. Where the warm dieth not. Where the warm, your thoughts, your mind. Uh huh. Every your remembers where the worm dieth not. Uh huh. And the fire is not quenched. And the fire will be quenched after you burn away. Not quenched. You see, friend, if you're going to follow scripture, follow scripture. Uh huh. Where the worm dieth not, you'll remember every opportunity that you had to receive Christ. Every message that was ever preached, everything you've ever done is going to play over and over and over. There's no relief in the pit. Mm hmm. And the fire is not quenched. Y'all thinking, oh, it's going to be over. I'm, I'm going to take all I can to. I just burn away. Poof, I'm gone. Nope. Mm -mm. What did Jesus say, Rochelle? Where the worm dieth not. Where the worm dieth not. The fire is not quenched. Uh -huh, read on. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter hard into life. Now, if your foot offends you. Now, he don't literally mean cut it off. I want to explain. Uh huh. Uh, expound that so people know he's not literally telling you to cut off your foot. He's trying to show you how important life is. That you should be able, um, willing to lose your own leg. Uh huh. How important it is to accept him. It should be in so important, Rochelle, that you're willing to push your family aside. Hallelujah. It should be so important. Uh huh. That if I had to push my wife to the side because I want to walk with him, I got to push her aside. That's how important life is. The scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and what else? Trembling. Uh-huh. I ain't depending on Rochelle to get me in. I'm depending on me to get me in there. Uh-huh. Uh, with, with the things I do in this body, I can make the choice. My choice is to serve him. Uh-huh. Well, you ain't got nobody over there. That's my choice. I'm going to serve him. I can make the choice just like all these other liars did. I can make the choice to take God's word and twist it and twist it a little bit and, and compromise it. And then the place is full. I can make that choice. Uh -huh. But there are consequences for the choices I make if I make that choice. Whoa, if me, it's me if I preach not the gospel, if I make that choice, this is my new home, this pit. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. If my leg offend me, what did it say, Rochelle? If my foot offend me? Cut it off. Cut it off. Read on. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell. Uh-huh. Some hold on, Rochelle. Some people may think they're gonna party their way to hell and they're gonna jigaboo because there's a party going on, so they're gonna take their time because uh-huh, they the man. Mm-hmm. Going to walk, think they're going to walk right into hell and everybody going to recognize you. No, first of all, there ain't going to be no walking done here. What the scripture say? They're going to be cast in there, did he, Rochelle? Then having two feet to be cast uh -huh. into hell. Getting cast in there. Ain't nobody walking to hell. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Y'all are walking that way, but friend, I'm trying to stop you. Uh-huh. But when these angels come to separate them, Rochelle, uh-huh, because you've been living it up. No, when I was small. I remember my grandmama and my granddad, they heist you up here by your bridges here. Uh-huh. Get, get in that room and, and clean them. My daddy used to do the same thing, Rochelle. Boy, if you don't get, heist you up by your bridges, get in there and clean that room up. Get out there and shovel that snow. It wasn't a walking over. No, he heist, and that's what the angels are going to do. You're going to be cast right there in the pit. I don't want that to happen to you. Friends, so I'm telling you to listen to the word of God. You're getting too many bad seeds. It's better for you if you have to cut off your family. It's better for you if you have to cut off that lying preacher. Uh-huh. It's better for you. 
Why don't y'all uh, take my advice and dissect uh, these messages? Hallelujah. Why don't after you listen to Pastor Harmon, go ahead and dissect what I said. In the same breath, dissect the people that I'm telling you about. Stop worrying about how big they are, how long they've been preaching, and who they, uh, what big influence they are, and how they sound. Stop worrying about all that stuff. That's how the devil will trick you because that will look good. That would sound good. Look how many people are following him. Uh huh. They follow him right to that hole over there. Uh huh. Where the fire shall never be quenched, and there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Is that what you want? Read on, girl. Where the worm dieth not, uh -huh. the fire is not quenched. Uh huh. And if thy eye offend you, if your eye offend you, again, this is not literal. Mm -hmm. I want to emphasize that because there are some people that really wants to do what God says, but they don't understand, and they probably standing in the mirror there crying, talking. About, oh, Lord, I want to say you, so I'm gonna dig my eye out. No, friend, don't you do that. Mm -mm, don't do that. This is not telling you to literally do these things. It's showing you how important it is. Uh huh. If your eye going to cause you to offend, cut it off. Pluck them out, friend. But not literally. You mean get rid of that thing. If going down uh -huh, to the lakefront, uh -huh, where all them ladies is half naked and all them men half naked down there, if that's going to cause you offend, then stop going. Mm -hmm. And even if that don't cause you to fear, don't go down there anyway because you ain't got no business down there. If them people want to go out there half naked and jump in the water, you as a saint of God ain't got no business down there. Uh huh. And if thy eye offend thee, read it, girl. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. Pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with, all, with one eye uh -huh. than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Uh huh. Where they're warm. Where not. the worm, your memory, friend, I done told you, it's not going to die. Everything that you have ever done, don't y'all remember, uh, Dante, don't go here. Don't y'all remember over there in the book of Luke uh -huh, about the rich man? Uh -huh. And Abraham said, Rememberest thou in your, in your lifetime when you had the good things and Lazarus had the bad things? Don't you remember? He remembered. Uh huh. Where the worm died not, and what else, Rochelle? And, and the, the fire, fire is, is not quenched. quenched. That's what the scripture says. Give me back to Matthew. Uh huh. So if anything gonna cause you to offend God, cut it off. When you start to take T.D. Jake's message, when you start to take Joyce Meyer's message, when you start to take the message of Paula White. Hallelujah. When you take the message of Daryl Hines, hallelujah to his name. When you take the message of Bishop Blake and that other bishop who's in there now uh, for Church of God in Christ. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, friend, when you take that word over, over the word of God, uh -huh, you in trouble. If you dissect a message, you'll see that I need to cut this off. This is not good for me. Mm -hmm. Cut the thing off. Uh -huh. You got a treasure there, friend. It's right there, but you got to cut some things off in order to get to the treasure. Read, Rochelle. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Uh -huh. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure here in the field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all they have, and buyeth that field. Uh-huh. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Seeking goodly pearls, Rochelle. They, this is a pearl that ain't nobody else got. Uh huh. So he's out there searching. Hallelujah to his name. Read on. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, uh huh, what did he do? Went and sold all that he had and bought it. This is how important the, the kingdom is. This is how important these good seeds are. I got good seeds in here. Uh-huh. I got good seeds in these hands. Uh-huh. And I'm telling you, and the scripture done told you, I got good seeds. You ought to be doing all you can to come get these seeds. Friend, and guess what? They ain't going to cost you a dime. You ain't got to go sell nothing. Come to the waters and drink. 
Get these seeds for free. Uh huh. Rochelle, when he found that good pearl, what did he do? One pearl, great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. He went and sold all he had to buy it. So, friend, all that's not like Christ, you got to give that stuff up. You ain't got to come out of your pockets. You got to come uh -huh, wretched and undone and say, God, I'm wretched and undone. And he'll forgive you. I repent of my sin. I want those good seeds. Some of y'all act like you can't understand nothing I'm saying. Uh-huh. Some of you act like it and some of, some of you truly don't, but you are learning to understand because you're still hanging in there. Uh-huh. Some of y'all I'm speaking Chinese to because you ain't opened up the book. Now I tell you, give me Ezekiel chapter 3. Give me Ezekiel chapter 3. Start me around maybe verse 4, I think I want. Give me Ezekiel chapter, that's what I want. Ezekiel chapter 3, start me at verse 4. I got some good seeds, friend. Hallelujah to his name. Uh-huh. But they ain't going to take these seeds, Rochelle. I don't know why. Oh, well, you speaking in a different language. You speaking something I ain't never heard. Uh-huh. The scripture says, oh, you look up here, Rochelle. Uh, say, uh, you go ahead. Say, don't go here, Dante. Stay there, Ezekiel. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 3, if our gospel be hid, who is it hid from? Them that are lost. Uh-huh. Well, get there, Ezekiel. Now listen, Dante. I want Ezekiel chapter 3, start me at verse 4. I want chapter 3, start me at verse 4. And he said unto me, uh -huh. son of man. Now God is speaking to Ezekiel here. The things that were written aforetime are for our learning. Friend, so I have to learn from Ezekiel here. Uh-huh. Some of these folks ain't going to hear a word I got to say, Rochelle. You know why? They ain't going to even listen to God. Even when I show them in the book what God said. And they'll tell me, well, T.D. Jakes explained it this way. Who cares what he, how he explained it? God explained it just like this, and I'm not going to change it. Read it, girl. And he said unto me, son of man, uh -huh. go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange... You ain't being sent to nobody that don't speak English. You ain't, Donnie, you speak English and you speak good English. I'm sending you to people that understand English. Rochelle, I don't speak Spanish. God ain't sending me to the Spanish uh, folks because I don't, we would have a, a barrier. They couldn't understand what I'm saying and I couldn't understand them. Uh-huh. So God is sending me to people that know and understand what I'm saying. Some of us uh, speak a different dialects, but you understand. Uh-huh, English, you understand. Some of us may speak slang, but it's still English. We understand. So God is not sending me to people that don't understand me. Read it, Rochelle. For thou art not sent to a people <coughs> of a strange speech and of a hard language, uh -huh. but to the house of Israel. But I'm being sent, uh, Ezekiel was sent to the house of Israel. But I'm being sent to you that are here in this city, you that are here outside of this city, wherever this message reaches you, that's who I'm being sent to. Read on. Not too many people of a strange speech uh -huh. and of a hard language whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Surely, Donnie, if I sent you to somebody that didn't quite understand you, they would have listened. They would have put down what they were doing because they would have focused to try to understand what you were saying and they would have listened to you. Hallelujah. When I come with a message this important, Rochelle, those that don't quite understand me, they will sit down and take the time and try to understand what I'm saying. But you all know what I'm saying, and you won't hear me. Uh-huh. Read on what the scripture says. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. But you, people of Milwaukee, you the people of the United States, wherever this message is going, y'all will not hear me. God said, don't be surprised, Daddy, they ain't going to hear you. Because they ain't going to listen to me. Read on what the scriptures say. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, mm -hmm. for they will not hearken unto me. Did you hear this? God told Ezekiel, go and give a message. 
Go on, tell them what I told you. They ain't going to listen to you. Uh-huh. They won't even listen to me. So, friend, I don't get discouraged. Uh-huh. When I get up here and preach God's word and I give it all I got. Uh-huh. And they didn't hear the message. I used to go back and cry to God. They didn't hear me. God showed me his word, Rochelle. All you're supposed to do is what I told you to do. You can't do no more. If they don't hear you, the scripture, I told you in my scripture, they won't even hear me. When you won't hear the God of heaven, friend, you in trouble. When you won't hear the good seed that he's given me to give unto you, you in trouble. Hallelujah. When the scripture has told us uh -huh, that the wheat and the tear was going to be separated and the wheat was going to go, the, the, the tares were going to go into a furnace and the wheat was going to go to, to be with the Lord. And then TDG come telling y'all, it's about time and it's time. Uh-huh. Well, it ain't time, quite time to start your business yet. If you start right away, you might fall out. Maybe if you wait till you got this. This is what, what this was talking about. But you will hear them. All of them will hear that man, Rochelle, won't hear me. Won't hear a word that Pastor Harmon got to say. Oh, read on. For all the house of Israel are imprudent. And hard hearted. Mm -hmm. They ain't gonna hear nothing. Mm -hmm. Imprudent and hard hearted, hard head, and they ain't gonna hear nothing. Anything that sounds like truth, they're gonna push away from it. Read on. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces. Y'all wonder why I can get up here and preach? You wonder why I can still preach every time I get up? Uh huh. With the same venacity, with the same strength. You wonder why? God put something down in me. Hallelujah. What I got in me, friend, you can't get this from some old no good bishop laying his hands on you, talking about bless you and go. You can't get that. Rochelle, the knowledge I got in me that God gave me, you can't get this at no cemetery school. Mm -mm. You can't get what I got uh -huh, going to seminary. I don't care which one you go to. Go to the best one in the country. You still can't get what I got. Mm -mm. What I got came from God. I didn't go and learn it in a book, in a classroom, sitting at a table. No, friend. Let me tell you what them people teach you. They teach you how to go to hell joyfully. Right here to this pit. The Holy Ghost teaches me, Rochelle, everything. Everything I need to know, he, he tells me. Behold, I have made thy face the strong against their faces. Read on. And thy faith forehead strong against their forehead mm -hmm. as an adamant harder than flint as a head of adamant harder than flint even my wife can't change me mm -mm. no my wife no there's some boundaries in the house now we can discuss painting the house we can discuss uh uh maybe buying a new car or not buying a new car uh we can decide and discuss uh whether we're gonna stay here in the city and all that stuff but when it comes to the word of God, she know better. Mm -mm. She know, she already know, uh-uh. I know God talks to him and uh, what God tells him ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm -mm. Ain't she can't come and smooch you up with me and all that and think I'm gonna change. She don't do that stuff. Mm -hmm. And she know it wouldn't be accepted. Uh, the Pastor Harmon said, girl, you better go and sit down somewhere. Uh-uh, whatever God put in my heart, that's what I'm gonna preach. She don't even make a suggestion. In fact, when I get up here and preach, when that boy reading or she reading for me, they have no idea where I'm coming from. Sometimes, friend, I don't even know. So how I'm going to tell them? That's why I take them a little time to page through them scriptures because they don't know where I'm coming from. Hallelujah to his name. God knows. God puts it down in me, friend. Read on, Rochelle. As an adamant heart of this land, have I made thy forehead. Mm -hmm. Fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks. Don't be afraid of them, Donnie. Don't be dismayed at how they're going to look at you. When, you. when you get done preaching and you're out there in a the restaurant and they walk up to you and they huffing and puffing and they try to bear up against you, fear them not. Mm -hmm. I am not afraid of you. I do not care who you are. All these crooked pastors in this city, I have called you out. Just like Paul called uh, some folks out. Maybe he called out Alexander. Well, which one? He said, Alexander the coppersmith. He done me much evil. So we knew exactly which one he was talking about. 
So when I call out these no good lying pastors, I call you out by your name and I'm not afraid. Uh huh. Well, they gonna sue you. Well, do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. Rochelle, I done tried to protect myself the best way I know how. After that, God protects me. Uh huh. So if I left something uncovered and you think you can get in that way, go right ahead. Let me tell you who you're gonna run into. Friend, you're not fighting with me, you fight with the king. That's who you're gonna run into with your rebellious self. Read on. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, uh -huh. though they be a rebellious house. Uh -huh. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I <coughs> shall speak unto thee, receive in thy heart. Wait a minute, where am I supposed to receive them first, Rochelle? In thy heart. I'm supposed to receive it in, in my heart, whatever God told me to speak. Friend, he told me to speak his word is right here. That's what he sent me for, to speak his word and not my word. My word ain't going to do you no good. It ain't going to do you a bit of good. He told me to speak his word, Rochelle. Receive it in my heart. Read on. And hear with thy ears. Uh-huh, and that's how I heard it. And I'm not going to change what I received in my heart and I heard with my ears. Read on. And go, get thee to them of the captivity. Uh -huh. unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them mm -hmm. thus saith the Lord. And that's what I'm doing today Rochelle. I'm telling them thus saith the Lord. Now some going to hear just a few of them and some not. Finish that scripture what it say. God whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Uh huh. Now listen friend. I'm telling you what God put on my heart. I don't go and sit down, write out messages and think what I want to say to make the people feel good. And then I go get some of the word of God and try to justify it. I don't do that, friends. Those are bad seeds. I told you, if I give you half the scripture, uh, if I just take a little passage of scripture and just give you that, because I can manipulate that and, and make the people do what I want them to do. Uh -huh. I'm told them, Rochelle, I ain't no good speaker. My wife told me to stop saying you ain't no good speaker. Well, I'm not a good speaker. Uh huh. I ain't got good stage presence. And I don't know a whole lot of fancy words. I don't look too good and all that. I'm not none of that, friend. If you think I am, then that's the power of God that you see. Hallelujah. Now, I done told you I ain't no good preacher, but if you think I am, well, then, friend, you are witnessing the power of the king. His name is Jesus, and he's the savior of the whole world. How many of y'all uh, are still following old T.D. Jakes that told you, uh -huh, write your vision. You done had something, write your vision and make it plain. And that's what y'all did. Y'all went down and started writing the vision because he took you into a scripture over there and told, write the vision. Mm -hmm. And I've told those that will come to here on Bible study, I told you don't come here with no one scripture and take it out of context. Don't come here and give me half this. Give me the whole thing. I want the whole picture. Hallelujah. When we talk about salvation, Rochelle, don't just talking about, well, if I only believe, thou shalt be saved. No, give me more than that. The scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. It says old things are passed away. But if I just told you, just believe, you walk out here talking about what well, I believe and I'm saved and so on and so forth. And you're going right here to this pit. Give me the whole picture. Write the vision. Uh -huh. And there y'all go getting out y'all books and writing down whatever he say. Oh, he said, if you had a dream that you're going to be a CEO, because that's all they know to talk about is money. Uh huh. Write it down. That's what he did, Rochelle. Why don't I, why don't, excuse me, why don't I go there? Where is it at? Dante, give me the book of Habakkuk. Uh huh. Then give me Habakkuk 2 and 2. What that say? Now, I'm sorry, you know, they got to get there, but uh, that's where it is. This is Habakkuk 2 and 2. Here, uh huh. He told Rochelle, write the vision and make it plain, just like old TD did. He said, write the vision and play, make it plain. If God gave you a dream, uh huh, or if you have a dream, and that dream just keep coming, uh huh, write down the vision. Uh -huh. He wants you to prosper. So write down the vision that you have for your dream. Write it down. When you get there, read it, Rochelle. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision <coughs> and make it plain upon tablets. Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets. Uh-huh. Read on. That he may run that read it. Now, hold on. Uh, uh, read that again. I'm going 
I'm going to show you what T.G. Jakes will stop you at. Read it. And the Lord answered me uh -huh. and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. That's all he's going to give you. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, y'all, y'all, since, since he speaks so good and he know how to sway you, uh -huh, you'll stop right there and then he'll say, Right, what did the Lord say? Write the vision. Make it plain. Some of you today have got a vision that uh -huh, you, your business is going to take off. You got to write it down. Didn't he say write the vision to make it plain? Well, why don't you hear the rest of the story? Read that other part, Rochelle. That he may run that readeth it. Now listen, that don't sound like a vision about making no business. That sounds like some judgment coming down. Uh-huh. Write the vision and make it plain. Write it upon tables that he that reads it may fear. Now, let me give you the story that he would not give you. Dante, go to Habakkuk 1 and 1. Start at verse 1 of Habakkuk. Chapter 1, verse 1. Let's see about uh, these good seeds that y'all took, uh, so-called good seeds that you took uh, from T.D. Jakes. You took good seeds and you left there talking about, ooh, I got good seeds. I can't wait to get home and finish writing my vision. Uh, I got a vision that my children are going to do this. I got a vision of this, that, and the other. Hey, the word of God said it, and I saw it in the scripture. Give them the whole story, Rochelle. The burden with Shabaka, the prophet. Now, this is a burden. This ain't nothing good. The scripture says the burden uh -huh, which Shabaka, the prophet, did see. What did he see, Rochelle? O oh Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou will not hear, uh -huh. even cry My out. cry is kind of the same, Rochelle. Uh -huh. Lord, how long shall I keep crying to these folks and they won't hear me? How long should I keep talking about these no good preachers, God, and you don't react? How long before you straighten them up and take them out of here? How long? Uh-huh. This is what Habakkuk said. Read it, Rochelle. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Uh -huh. Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not say. Crying out about violence, Rochelle. He said, God, how long do I have to cry about these things that are going on and you won't intervene? This is, this is the vision that he talked about. Read on, Rochelle. Why doest thou show me iniquity and cause? Why do you let me see these things go on? Uh-huh. God, why do you let me see so many of these new preachers that I lead these people away? Why do you let me see such a thing? My friend, God is being patient. Uh -huh. God is giving them space to repent. Read on, girl. Why doest thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. These are all the things I see. Hallelujah. This is all the things I see that these people, uh-huh, they taking the spoil, they taking the things of the people of God who really mean well, but they're being deceived. Why do I have to continue to watch this, oh God? This is what this scripture is saying. Read on, Rochelle. And there are that rise of strife and contention. Uh huh. Therefore, the law is slack, and judgment doeth never go forth. For the wicked do of compassion. The law is slack, and there's no judgment in the land. Uh huh. The wicked just overrun over the, the righteous folks. There's the law is slack and there's no judgment. Read on. For the wicked do a compass about the righteous. You see? Theref Keep on. Therefore wrong judgment proceeded. You see? Wrong judgment proceeded. Read on. Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work. Now hold on. Days. This is God's response. Hallelujah to his name. What he, what he told uh, uh, Habakkuk to write there in 2 and 2 is this right here that you're finna read now. This is what he's supposed to write. This is the vision that he is supposed to write. It has got nothing to do with no business and making you happy and all that stuff. He is supposed to write on tables, Rochelle, the judgment of God, and he that read it will run with fear. Some of y'all still got notes to this day. Talking about write the vision and make it plain. Oh, uh, I don't want to spend too much. I want to have, I want all my profits uh, to far, far exceed my expenses. I'm writing this vision. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm writing the vision that I'm going to start with one building and then I'm going to have, within a year, I'm going to have two buildings. That's my vision. Come on. Mm -hmm. 
before you jump in here, stand and listen to the word that I'm preaching today. Because if you don't, friend, I guarantee you, you're going to be right here in this pit. What is the vision that he was supposed to write? Read it, girl. Behold, you among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I rise, raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. He's going to raise up some people. Uh -huh, to chastise them, Rochelle. That's what's happening here. And it's going to be a great chastisement. That's why he said, write the vision and make it plain. Write what I'm telling you right here. Uh -huh. Some of y'all still writing to this day the vision T.D. Jakes is telling y'all. Some of y'all are still writing the vision that old Daryl over there is telling y'all. Some of y'all are writing the vision uh -huh, that old Mr. Daniels over there is telling y'all. Mm-hmm. This is not what the word of God is talking about. What they have done, Rochelle, is diminished it. Uh-huh. Write the vision and make it plain. Uh-uh. Them some bad seeds. You are not to write out there, write no vision, talk about what your life going to be and all this stuff. That ain't what they're talking about. Those are some bad seeds, friend. Now, if you just bear with me, we're going to give you the good seeds, the right seeds, and we ain't going to change the meaning of them, Rochelle. We're not going to diminish them. Read it, honey. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that uh -huh. bitter and hasty nation, mm -hmm. which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not there. They're going to take y'all land. It didn't belong uh, to them, but they're going to come in here. They're going to take everything. They got a strong army. They got horses that move like leopards. They're going to come through here and take everything. They're going to come in and chastise you. Is that, that's the vision you're supposed to write. Read it, Rochelle. They are terrible and dreadful. Uh-huh. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves. Uh-huh. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. They shall come all You know, violence. Rochelle, when the eagle is hungry, he ain't, he ain't just looking out from the tree and he sees a rabbit down there. He ain't just flying, just taking the time trying to get to it. No, uh -uh. no, he's in a hurry before that thing get to moving. Before he even see him coming, that eagle takes off Rochelle. He's an eagle. He got good vision. And when he spread those rings, Rochelle, uh -huh, he just can glide and glide fast. He may flap him and get there. Look, but he's going, he's going to get there. And that's how these Chaldeans are going to come to chastise these people. You that, uh, uh, that uh, just shunned justice, that brought no judgment, uh -huh, that made the word of God slack. You, you didn't show any mercy. You did things your way. Uh huh. Read it, Rochelle. They should come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. Uh -huh. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. They will make a, a deride. They're going to they, they mock your little strongholds that you think you got. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to mock you. Uh-huh. They should make it heaps of dust. They're going to take everything that you that belonged to you. This what they were supposed to. This was the vision they were supposed to write, DJ. Not for you to go out there and write what you want to do. What verse number is that, Rochelle? Ten. Give me back to read Habakkuk two and two one more time. This the vision that they were supposed to write. Habakkuk two and two. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Mm -hmm. And make it plain upon tables that he may run that reader this. That he they may run that reader. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all. When they give you half the story, I told anybody that listens to me, anybody that uh, comes to a Bible study that I ever teach, this is why it takes me so long, Rochelle, while I'm up here preaching. Because I can't give you half the story. Some of y'all are right now sitting back saying, oh, I didn't know what that meant. I thought it meant you were supposed to write the vision of, of your life and what you want because that's all I ever heard. Now, friend, you know the whole story. Hallelujah. These people that had neglected, uh -huh, that was disobedient to God. Uh -huh, and uh, Habakkuk had to watch this. God said, I'm going to intervene. 
This is what's going to happen. Now, the vision I gave you, write it down on tablets. Make it plain. Don't put no big words to it. Make it plain that he that readeth it may run. Hallelujah to his name. So, friend, I'm trying to warn y'all of these bad seasons that are being put out, but you won't hear me. I'll take you to the scripture. I don't tell you what's in my heart or what I think. I'll take them right there to the scripture, Rochelle. Thus saith the Lord. But they won't hear me. You'd rather listen to these old lying, no good prophets. Jeremiah 14 and 14. Dante, get me there real quick. That's who y'all want to hear. You don't want to hear me. Hallelujah. You don't want to hear. I'm telling you that your pastor is passing out bad seeds, but you don't want to hear me. But the seeds he give me make me feel good. We was all shouting today in there. We all felt good, didn't we, y'all? But you're all still on your way to the pit. Hallelujah to his name. Uh -huh. Listen up, pastor. This is for you and you that follow him. What did it say, girl? Then the Lord said unto me, uh -huh. the prophet's prophecy lies in. No, name. wait a minute. They prophesy truth. Lies mm -hmm. in my name. Mm -hmm. God ain't sent none of these. Uh -huh. Them that will not stand up and tell the truth. God did not send them. That's why I tell you. Get out your Bible. How do you know if God sent you? Follow me. Because I'm in this book. I haven't changed this word. Friend, if I get in here and I change this word, know that God didn't send me. Hallelujah. I, I'm just like any other man. I get tempted like any other man. I want to do things that I want to do just like any other man. But Rochelle, God said I can't do such a thing. So I stick to what God says. That's how you know I'm a man of God. That's how you know I stand for the truth. That's how you know I'm not compromised when I get up here. Uh-huh. And when I'm out there, I live the same thing that I preach. That's how you know I'm a man of God. But when you got these old prophets getting up here talking about, well, the Lord said this. The Lord told me that. And I'll take you right to the scripture. Sometimes I put them liars up on the screen so you can see that it came out of their mouth, that they gave some bad seeds. Then I direct you right here to the scripture. This is what the scripture says, and this is what they said. So don't come telling me he preached a good message. No, friend. Uh-uh, Proverbs, don't go here, Dante. Proverbs 13 and 5 says that every word of God is pure. Now, friend, if it ain't pure, if it's been changed, uh-huh, it ain't pure then, Rochelle. So don't come telling me he preached a good message. Uh huh. It was unpure. Every good message, uh huh, is pure, Rochelle. So listen, read it, Rochelle. What he says about him. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesied lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them. See there, God said He didn't send these folks. If it don't, if what they're preaching don't line up with the word of God, God didn't send them but they sound good. I don't care how they sound. God didn't send them. But he said some of what God, God didn't send them. You can't say some of what God said. I got to say everything that God said, just like he said it. I can't change it one iota. God didn't send them. Read on, girl. Neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. They prophesy to you a false vision and divination. Some of these folks work through witchcraft, Rochelle. Mm -hmm. They see in their own heart and they tell you that God said this. And I take y'all again to the scripture, just like we just went there and held back Now y'all cannot deny that man got up and told y'all, write the vision and make it plain. Go on on the internet and look at it. He said exactly what, I'm, write the vision and make it plain. And told y'all that was for you to take off and fly with your wings and all this stuff. And you see that ain't what the scripture says. Read on, girl. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. Uh -huh. And a thing of naught. And, the and a thing of, of that, that don't mean nothing, Rochelle. In other words, they prophesied you a thing of vanity. Don't mean nothing. Read on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my Listen name. Listen up. This talk about you, you crooked, no good pastor. This talk about you, you no good, crooked church mother. This talk about you, old deacon. That's full of lies. This talk about you. 
This talking about you, church member, uh huh, who support all these liars. This talking about you. Read. And I sent them not, yet they say sword and famine shall not be in this land. Yet like. they say, ain't no evil going to befall you. Uh -huh. uh, all of God's children are going to prosper. You ain't got nothing to worry about. This is what these liars tell you. Read on. By sword and famine shall these prophets be consumed. That's how they're going to be consumed. By sword and famine is how you're going to be consumed. You lying, no good person, you. And all of y'all that follow them. Read on, Rochelle. Read the scripture, say. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out wait a minute, of the wait, streets. Wait, they ain't got nothing to do with the people, do it? Did you say the people? And the people. Uh huh. Listen, they're talking about y'all. Y'all that saying, well, I'm not the pastor and that's him. Well, this for you. Read on, what did it say? And the people to whom they prophesy shall. See, I told you it's talking about you. The people who they prophesy to is you. You that grab a hold of their lies and you take it and run with it. Oh, God going to do this. God going to do this. And God didn't say none of that stuff. Uh -huh. Read that verse again, girl. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem mm -hmm. because of the famine and the sword. Mm -hmm. And they shall have none to bury them. Them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters. Uh -huh. For Why? I will pour their wickedness upon them. See, God said he's going to pour their wickedness upon them. Is that what you wanted? Uh -huh. you, you like them bad seeds when the pastor Harmon, who ain't got nobody to follow him, just yelling and screaming, them is bad seeds. But you said, no, he said, well, it sounds good. And look how they prosper. And I won't be like them. Well, I won't be like Christ. Mm. Rochelle, he didn't have the best things. Uh -huh. When he came marching through, uh, he came on a, a donkey, Rochelle. He didn't have no horse with bridles and coming, stepping, all looking all good and all that. No, he came on a donkey, meek and lowly. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to tell y'all, y'all accepting these bad seeds. I'm trying to warn them, Rochelle, but they won't hear me. I'm trying to warn them left and right. Every opportunity I get, I'm trying to warn them. Uh, Doctor, give me Ezekiel 3 and 17. Uh -huh. I'm trying to warn you about these bad seeds, friend. These good seeds, this treasure I got. You ought to do all you can to get this treasure. Hallelujah. And the treasure is free. Hallelujah to his name. I got a treasure in my heart. I got treasures in my hand, and I'm trying to give them away. Why are you giving them away? He told me to. Come to the waters and drink, my friend. Are you thirsty for the truth? Well, come to the waters and have a drink. Read, Rochelle. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Uh-huh. Son of man, I have made thee the watchman unto the house. Now, wait a minute. Uh-huh. He talking about Ezekiel here. Uh-huh. Now, listen, Rochelle, again, the things that were written aforetime are for our learning. Uh -huh. For all of you Bible scholars, uh-huh, this is when Ezekiel, uh -huh. He was exiled into Babylon along with 10,000 others from Judah, Rochelle. They was all uh, taken into Babylon. And he was supposed to warn those that were there uh -huh, where he was. So, friend, I look at this scripture. Things that were written before time or for our learning. I'm going to learn something for this, Rochelle. Uh -huh. Even while he was in exile, how some have exiled us preachers that are preaching righteously. You have exiled us. Don't listen to them. Uh -huh. You that have stood with your political uh -huh, person uh -huh, and you have exiled us Christians that say they ain't going to vote. They just going to talk about staying with God. Y'all exiled us. Y'all left us. Uh -huh. You that will stand for these homosexual causes and will not say a word about it. Y'all have exiled us that will. Uh -huh. Things that were written aforetime, time, Rochelle, they're for our learning. So all of us that are here still crying out against uh -huh, uh, homosexuality. Us still that are here that are crying against sin. Those are crying out, don't be teaching our children this uh, in school that it's all right to think you're a, a boy. It's all right when you're a girl. It's all right to think you're a, a it. When God said he made a male and female, and here us he is standing and saying, no, nope, we saying what God say. And you fake preachers won't even touch it. Mm -hmm. Or y'all say something real nice uh huh. So that nobody know what side of the fence you on. T.D. Jakes told them, "My thoughts have evolved and are evolving." In other words, his thoughts have changed with regard to homosexual sexuality, and they keep changing. That's what he said. 
Mm -hmm. I would tell Dante to put it up, but I won't take from my preaching today. I want to preach the hell out of somebody today. I want to get all that stuff out of you. Uh huh. So then once you get clean, I can put something in you. Read the scriptures, Rochelle. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman uh -huh. for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. So, Rochelle, the he made me a watchman to anybody that will hear me. Every preacher, real preacher, that is preaching this word of God unchanged, you a watchman. Some of us are crying from our living rooms. Some of us are crying from our churches. Some of us are crying on our jobs, friend. Why? Because God made us a watchman. Read it. It says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto uh -huh. the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give the warning from me. I am supposed to give a warning. Who did this warning come from, Rochelle? From me. Uh -huh, from God. God. That's God speaking. I'm here to give you a warning from God. I have not got up here and preached anything about what I think, what I said. I ain't gave you no kind of warning about none of that. Mm -mm. If I gave you a warning, it was about God defending me. Them men that wanted to get me, I gave you a warning. Don't do such a thing. Because you're not fighting with me, you're fighting with God. That was your warning. Now God is giving warning here, Rochelle, about their soul. I gave you warning not to hurt this flesh and blood right here. Now listen about your soul. Read on, Rochelle, what did it say? When I say unto the wicked, thou... When I say unto the unsaved, when I say unto these crooked pastors, when I say unto the wicked, read. Thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning. Now listen, I told you all that are accepting and taking these bad seeds. I told you if you accept these seeds, if you start nurturing these old bad seeds, friend, I done told you you're going to die. You're going to wind up right here in this pit. I told you that. Uh huh. If I don't tell you, friend, I'm in trouble with God. That's why I ain't got no problem telling you why I don't want to be in trouble with the king. Read it, Rochelle. It says, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, uh -huh. but his blood will I require at thine At my hand. If I don't tell him, if I don't give him the truth, I hope oh, you hear me, Mr. Jakes. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want nobody to think... In any of these pastors that I don't called out, any of these folks that I don't call, don't think I hate them. Don't think I got nothing against them. Uh, 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 only what they preach. They preach against Christ. Yeah, I got to defend the gospel, Rochelle. That's what I do. I don't have nothing against these, these fellas. Uh, uh I have no hatred for you. In fact, friend, I've said several times, I wish that you would straighten up and fly right so that we can stand side by side and preach the gospel. We can preach the same thing and have the same judgment of one mind, but I don't agree with y'all. I agree with the book. Read on, Rochelle. Yet if thou warn the wicked. If I tell them about their ways, uh-huh. And he turn not from his wicked. And they keep on doing what they're going to do, uh-huh. Nor from his wicked ways. And he don't stop doing it. He just keep on, uh-huh. For he shall die in his iniquity. He's going to die in his sin, uh-huh. But thou hast delivered thy soul. But I'm not going to be responsible. Why? Because I warned him. Mm -hmm. There are many young folks that have sat in these pews that have heard me preaching and have told me, I'm coming back, I'm going to get it right. And so it just, they sat there and told me that. And I said, son, you got to do it now. It is, you don't know when you're going to leave here, friend. They're gone. Dead. This is where they are, friend. Right here in this pit. Hallelujah. How can you say that? The scripture just told you. If they didn't turn from their ways and he die, uh -huh, he's going to die in his sin. But if I told him, friend, I ain't got to stand before God to say why I didn't, didn't tell him. Why? Because I told him. Just like I'm telling y'all about the bad seeds that you have accepted. I told you, and maybe you're not going to hear me. Friend, you don't know when you're going to die, but rest assured, if you don't throw away those bad seeds and you continue carrying those old bad seeds and you won't accept the good ones, you're going to wake up right there. Read on, Rochelle. 
again when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness. Now listen, you that call yourself once saved, always say this especially for you. Mm -hmm. That you can never lose your salvation. This especially for you. Mm -hmm. You that are saved and, and continue uh, on the dip and dab over here and all that stuff. Uh -huh. You all that say, I ain't forgot about uh, getting you out of the them old fake marriages, that's coming. I got to finish running up and down in front of T.D. Jakes and all his lies. Mm -hmm. You that say that you can stay in this, uh -huh. well, God said, you, know, you shouldn't do it, so uh, I'm going to stay with her, but then I ain't going to do it no more. Uh -huh. You keep on listening to Alan Parr's lies. Uh -huh. Well, it's okay for you to stay with, with that one, but don't do it again. The God will forgive you. No, he won't. Liar. Read on, Rochelle, for you righteous folks. Read on. Again, when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity. If a righteous man turned from doing what's right and then he started to commit sin, uh-huh. And I lay a stumbling block. And God him, lay a stumbling block before him, right? He shall die. No, he shall live. He shall die. He shall live. He shall die. Now listen, uh-huh. If a righteous man, a saved man, Start going out. He turned from doing what's right, Rochelle, and he go to doing what's wrong. He go out there. He in the street now. He go out there. He selling drugs. Maybe he ain't doing all that. Maybe he just cheating on the taxes. His tax season coming up. Maybe he um, devising some lies on this side over here just to get ahead. He has turned from his righteousness. And God said he lay a stumbling block before him and the man die. What did he say, Rochelle? And I lay a stumbling block before him. He uh -huh. shall die. Because thou has not given him warning. Now, wait a minute. He should die because I saw him, do, knew what he was doing. And I didn't go say, hey, John, you know, God don't want us. To, what are you doing, man? We can't lie. Tell the truth. If we got to pay the government, then the Bible told us to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, didn't it, Rochelle? So if I owe the government, I'm going to pay them. I'm not going to be trying to figure out a way to try to cheat them and all this stuff. Oh, they won't catch this. I ain't going to do that. So I'm telling you, John, don't you do such a thing. Mm -hmm. But if I see him doing the Rochelle and I say, what you doing, John? Well, I, I'm going to figure this out where I, where I can't get caught. I ain't want to pay all this. And I say, oh, okay, well, all right. Well, I ain't got nothing to do with that, John. You, uh -uh, I'm in trouble, Rochelle. Huh. Well, you didn't help write it. God said I'm in trouble. Why? Because I didn't warn him. You see, friend? I'm in trouble because I didn't say, John, stop doing what you're doing. You know, that is not how our God wants us to operate. No, I said, well, I ain't going to have nothing to do with that. I walked away. Read the scripture, girl. It says, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die mm -hmm. because thou has not given him warning. You see, he going to die in his sin because I didn't warn the man. But what if you did warn him, Donnie? Read on, Rochelle. He shall die in his sins, and his righteousness, which he have done, shall not be remembered. But his Wait blood, a minute. His righteousness, what he done, God going to look at that and weigh it out. Shall not be remembered. Now listen, all of you, especially in the Catholic Church, has been taught uh -huh, that if you die, and God going to, he going to take the, some scales. Mm -hmm. He going to take some scales and... On the left side, Rochelle, he's going to put all your bad stuff. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, Betty, on the right side of the scale, he's going to put all your good stuff. And then he's going to let it balance out. And if, if the good stuff outweighs the bad, well, you made it in. But if the bad stuff outweighs the good, you're going right to hell. Now, let me tell you, whoever started that lie and whoever continued to believe that lie, uh -huh. Come on, let me show you where you're going. Right here to this pit. But I got to warn you, that's why I'm here. Read what the scripture says because they don't believe me. Read it again, Rochelle. Again, when a righteous man do a turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he have done, shall not be remembered. You see, but friend, your righteousness, everything you've done, God said he ain't going to remember that. That ain't even coming up. All, what you, all the righteousness you did, erased. So you with the scales, 
Don't even put nothing on the righteous side because there's nothing there. Your sin is what God sees. There ain't no righteousness in you. He already told you right there. I didn't say it. He said it, didn't he, Rochelle? Read that portion again right there where he said his righteous won't be remembered. Read that. Because thou hast not given him warning, mm -hmm. he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he have done, shall not be remembered. Read on. But his blood will I require at thine That's hand. where I would be in trouble if I didn't say nothing. If I allowed you to keep going on and I didn't say nothing, talking about, well, they ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm -mm. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm telling you, friend, these bad seeds that are being passed out don't have nothing to do with them. Uh -huh. Look at what's being given. Uh -huh. Think about it today as you go through your day. I ain't got much time here, Rochelle. Think about it as you go through your day. Uh -huh. The thing that Pastor Harmon has given you, don't let them slip your mind. Don't forget about them. Uh, Hebrews 2. Give me Hebrews chapter 2. Hit me at verse 1 there, Rochelle. What'd that say? Hallelujah to his name. Don't forget about them, friend. How much time we got here? 26. Give me Hebrews chapter 2. Uh-huh. Yeah, look up here, girl. For what did it say? The word spoken by angels now listen, friend. <clears throat> listen, friend. I'm telling you. Don't let these things slip your mind that I'm giving you today. Go and consecrate on them. Remember we talked, Jesus told us about that treasure, remember? Uh-huh. You ain't got enough money, and you went and sold all you had just to get it. Remember that. Remember, I took you to where they, where them fake prophets took you to and told you about. I took you there. Then I showed you what God said. If the word spoken uh -huh, by angels was steadfast, uh-huh. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Uh huh. How shall we escape? Now let me tell you, friend. I want to ask you with your crafty self. How are you going to get by? How are you going to get by? Maybe you didn't know what them lying preachers told you. You just believe what they said. But then here come a little old loud mouth like me to come and say, that's not what God said. Let's go to what he preached or she preached. You know you, you messed up now. Let's go to what they preached and see what God said. Let's see if he said what they said. And you found out that they did not. You found out that they changed God's word. And I told you that every, God, every word of God is pure and showed you. Don't forget it. What did it say? How shall we what? How shall we escape? How shall we get away? How shall we get away from a God like this when he told you this and you did that? How shall you escape? Read it, Rochelle. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? If you neglect the word of God, the salvation his word brings, if you neglect that, how are you going to escape? How are you going to get by? Read on which at first began to be spoken by the Lord mm -hmm. and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Listen, those that heard him, Rochelle, they confirmed it, and now they, they, they preaching at us. How are we going to escape, friend? Uh-huh. Paul preached through the book, Rochelle. That's how I got it. Somebody preached it to me. That's how I got it. Now I'm preaching it to somebody, and somebody ain't hearing me, and somebody ain't. How are you going to escape you that they won't hear? Uh-huh. My job is to contend. My job is to fight for the gospel. My job is to fight for the truth. And that's what I'm doing. And if you are a saint of the most high, you're supposed to help me. But you won't do it. Jude 1. Give me Jude. I'm sorry, baby. Give me Jude chapter 1. There's only one chapter. Start me at verse 1, and then we're going to send them home. Uh, uh, let me see. I got a few more minutes. This is going to be the last verse I go to, I guess. I don't know. But let's get there. My job is to fight. Uh huh. Anybody that lies, anybody that changed God's word, my job is to fight against them. Uh huh. Uh huh. The, the Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving, they're going to have their partner for, I don't want to start no stuff. The fearful, that's what you are. Unbelieving. You don't believe what God's word says. Uh huh. When you get there, Rochelle, read. Jew, the servant of Jesus Christ. Jew, the servant of Jesus Christ. And you that are living right, your brother. Read on. 
and brother James. Uh huh, and him too. Go to ahead. Them that are sanctified by God the Father. He's writing to us, Rochelle. So if you ain't sanctified by God and you ain't gonna stand with him, this letter ain't right to you. T.D. Jakes, you're not included in this letter. You're fighting against God. You men that have called your wife to come and pastor with you, you this letter is not to you. You're fighting against God. You that are in these churches that are committing sacrilege every time. They change their pulpit, got smoke going up. It's so dark in there, you don't know if you're, if you're in a club. This letter is not to you. You little pastor there on the corner, uh-huh, preaching all you know how, preaching everything out of that book and not changing it. Uh, this letter to you. You there that are preaching, don't know how you're going to pay the heat bill next month so that you can come back and continue to preach. This message is for you. Uh-huh. You there that are just hanging on, uh-huh, Barely just hanging on, but you're hanging on. Having done all to stand, what the scriptures say do? Stand. This letter is for you. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you keep on fighting. Uh -huh. It looked like you're losing, but you're not. You're still standing. You still got your dukes up. You still uh -huh, are holding on to the word of God. You ain't accepting. Talking about, well, homosexuality, it could be right. No, you said, no, it's wrong. And I'm not going to change. And I'm ready. I got my dukes balled up and I'm ready to fight. And I told you how I fight. I fight with the word of the king. Read it, girl. Jew, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, <sighs> and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mm -hmm. Mercy unto you and peace. And now, Rochelle, that was a very important, that last part that you read there, I think the last two words of that verse, what did it say? And called. Mm -hmm. And called. So that's very important. That little fellow down there, I told y'all that taking all the scriptures out of context and, and you in your first trimester because God blessing you and he got to impregnate you and bought a, uh, you ain't called. This letter is to the call. This letter is to us who will not change God's word. This letter is to us who will not take the word of God and make it say what we want to say. This letter is for us. Mm -hmm. Read on, Rochelle. Mercy unto you uh -huh. and peace and love. Be what? Multiply. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about to us. Uh -huh. To us uh -huh. that are saved, to us that are standing for the king. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied. Read on. Be love, when I gave all diligence to write unto you mm -hmm. of the common salvation. We ain't got no different salvation. All of us that are standing up, up for the king, we got one salvation. We got one God, one Lord, one Savior. Just one. We don't, we don't worship the Delta God. We don't mix the Delta God. We don't uh, bring in the Omega and all them gods. We don't even get on out of here with that stuff. Mm -hmm. This is not talking to y'all. Y'all, Father, the devil got y'all book. But I'm trying to uh -huh, bring you the truth so you'll come on over here and join us. Read on, Rochelle, what, what, this, what the scriptures say. It was needful for me to write unto you and uh -huh. exhort you that, you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith. That you got to fight, Rochelle, earnestly. Not that you just get in here act like you're fighting. Don't get in here act like you're standing with us. Don't get in here talking about I'm scared of what my I don't want them to see I was looking at you online. I don't want them to see that I was looking at your message because my church going. This ain't talking to you because you're not earnestly contending. I don't care who your pastor is. I told you my pastor uh, 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 with the uh, Daryl Hines father was my pastor. Uh-huh. But the man left us. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of saints uh -huh. Some of us didn't really know the way. He left us to go join that nincompoop over there. This letter was not for him. To earnestly contend, you take care of the little ones that God, that you say God put under you. Thank God, Rochelle, I had enough sense to hold on and try to find the scriptures for myself until another pastor came, John Goodwin, a good man. He gone now. Good man that taught us those scriptures. He didn't leave us. Mm-mm. I'm not going to leave the little two or three that I got that's holding on. I ain't going to leave them. They might leave me, Rochelle, but I'm not going to leave them. I'm going to see about them, call about them. that little lady down in, in Texas down there. Uh-huh. When she was here, I took her under my wing, Rochelle. Uh-huh. Then she had to go back. And I told my wife, because it's not right for me, my wife keep in contact with her, check on her. Make sure she all right. Make sure she hanging in there. I ain't going to say her name, but I'm sure she's probably watching now. 
Uh-huh. Keep on fighting, girl. Hallelujah to his name. Don't think Pastor Harmon forgot about you. Think about you all the time. I want to make sure you still got your dukes up. What the, the scripture say, Rochelle? Well, earnestly contend, uh-huh. Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh-huh. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Now listen, unaware. For there are certain men that crept in unawares, honey. They did what it said? Yes, okay. unawares. All right, you made a little mistake there. That's all right. But there are certain men that crept in unaware. Let me tell y'all something. T.D. Jakes crept in unaware. Mm -hmm. He had all got into all y'all feeling and telling the woman, you are loose. Uh, Jesus told the lady he, she was loose from her infirmity. She couldn't stand upright, uh, Rochelle. Uh -huh. She was infirm. She couldn't stand upright. Uh -huh. So old T.D. crept in and said, this is a way to get them. Let me tell them that the women, they loose. And the women will follow. And they sure did. Mm -hmm. You see? He didn't loose them. He loosed that woman who couldn't stand upright. That was her infirmity. And Jesus loosed that. And she was able to stand up. And he loosed these women. Now they preaching and all this stuff. They bishops and all this. And when you try to show them the scripture that a man is supposed to, they said, oh, I ain't trying to hear that. That, that was back then. T.D. Jake said we loose. And when he tried to pull them in, they went super nuts and was ready to kill the man. He crept in unaware. Read on, Rochelle. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Mm -hmm. Ungodly men. Ungodly men. This, I told you, he done changed the word of God and so maybe have your preacher. He's ungodly. Read on, Rochelle. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. That's what they did. They turned the graces of our God into lasciviousness. They didn't want God, Rochelle. They lusted after things that God could give them. The grace of our God said, you have sinned, you're wretched and undone, but I'm going to welcome you in. But what they turned it into is God can give you this. God can give you that. They changed the grace of God into lasciviousness. How many of them preach what, uh, anything like what I preach? How many of them preach about you changing your life and all this stuff? All they preach about is what God going to give you. They changed the grace of God into lasciviousness. Read on. And denying the only Lord God. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Close your book. Almost done. Went beyond my time. I'm going to try to. I'm a few minutes over. That's all right. Mm -hmm. I still didn't finish what I wanted to get to. Maybe next week. I told you I don't preach what I want to preach. I preach what God got on my heart. Uh -huh. Some of these little folks that do listen to me have heard that man. Now you'll be able to go back there and see. He, uh, the word didn't say that. I would have never known that if I just shut Pastor Harmon off. I would have never found that. Friend, it ain't got nothing to do with me. God gave you that. He just used this little old fat preacher. That's all. I ain't no bigger, no better than you are. Mm -mm. I ain't got no more nothing than you got. Uh -uh. The, the same anointed that the Holy Ghost uh, give me, you got the same anointing. There's only one Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. How much do you give of yourself? How much do you lay before him? And more importantly, how many of you have saw yourself in these scriptures? How many of you have said, I I've saw the seeds that I've taken in. I saw that these are some, some bad, bad seeds. I've seen the lies that are being taught. I've seen uh -huh, the change they have got in God's word. They changed it to draw me in and then I got hooked. I saw it. How many of you have seen it? Is that you, my friend? Well, today you can be free. Do you want to be free so that you can follow the king? Well, let's go, go and talk with him. His name is Jesus, and he's the savior of the whole world. Father in heaven, we come before you in Jesus' name, thanking you yet again, thanking you for the truth of your word. You've opened my spiritual eye, now I see. You've unplugged my spiritual ear, now I hear you have broken the foulness of my heart, and now I understand. And I ask you, O oh God, to forgive me. I repent of my sin. I have taken your word. I have received your word from others who have uh, uh, distorted it, who have changed it, who have diminished it, who have taken from it. And I see I have done the same, and I ask you to forgive me. I'm sorry for what I've done. I repent of my sin. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart and change me. 
I confess my sin before you. I'm guilty. I'm wretched. I'm undone. My garments are filthy. But I believe that you died for me. I believe that on the third day you rose and now you're seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe that I ask you if you would forgive me that you will. So I ask you, oh God, to forgive me. I'm guilty. I repent. I am godly sorry. Come into my heart. Come into my mind. Change me. And as of this very moment, I accept you as the Lord of my life and I am your servant. Do with me as you will. In Jesus name, let every heart say thank God and amen. Hallelujah to his name. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that if you pray this prayer with me, you are now my new brother or sister in the Lord. Thank God for you. You are my new brother or sister in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And let me, uh, I, I try not to go uh, so long, but friend, I'm telling you, God's word is like fire, Rochelle. Uh-huh. Every time I think I'm just about to stop, boom, there goes something else. God said, dude, give me this, give me that. Uh, and God don't speak. I'm saying he put it on my heart. God don't be speaking to me like, say this, say that, like these old lying preachers are telling you. No, friend. Let me give you the death clock, and then we're going to send you home. Reported numbers as of midnight, those who have gone from this life. The death clock says as of midnight, 4,104 souls have gone. Rochelle, there's no need to praying for. No need at all. I hear some folks, they don't lost a loved one. They say, oh, will y'all pray for Johnny that God will have mercy? Stop it. Mm -mm. And it's too late for Johnny. No, if he didn't know Christ when he left here, guarantee you he's in that pit. If they did not know him, they're gone. Hallelujah to his name. Let me thank our friends on Facebook Instagram, YouTube, and Rumble, and the other platforms where we are being shared. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do Pastor Harmon a favor. If you want to send your tithes and offering, let me tell you how to do it. Uh, we don't want no green here. So you can keep that to pay your bills and all that stuff. This is how you pay us your tithes and offering. You share this message. You share this message to whoever you know to share it to. We don't want your money. God take care of us. There is enough people here in this city to help Pastor Harmon. And the few that I got, well, God said his grace is sufficient and we got enough. Hallelujah to his name. If one of them leave, God still take care of us. I am not worried about that. I want you to share this message with somebody. Uh -huh. Because the moment you share it, uh -huh, you've helped Pastor Harmon. And what would you help him with? I'm trying to build up my treasure up there. I ain't looking for no new nothing. I'm trying to get everything that I can get up yonder. Hallelujah to his name. And friend, if it be the Lord's will, we hope to see you next week at the same time at 11.10 a.m. And until that time, take care of yourselves and each other. So long from Way of Life Ministries. Goodbye.